I'm gonna go over another Jane Doe case with you guys, and they call her Tempe Girl. On April 27, 2002, in Tempe, Arizona, a fully clothed female body was found by a mall employee near the Arizona State University. When her body was found, she had been dead for around 24 hours. When the autopsy was done, we find out that she was between the ages of 15 to 19 years old. She stood around five foot one inches tall, weighing about 120 pounds to 125 pounds. She had brown eyes, black hair. She was most likely of Hispanic or Native American descent. The clothes that Tempe girl was wearing was a red halter top, blue jeans with a side zipper, eyelets on the waistband, she also had blue underwear, one black wedge high heel shoe, size six and a half. Around her wrist, she had a blue elastic hair tie. And then she also had an L-shaped scar on the back side of her left hand. And it was about one inch long. And it started from her pinky ring finger down to her wrist. She also had purple nail polish on her fingertips that was faded. Her DNA was taken and her dental rec records were taken and they were tested but they didn't find any matches. At first, the investigators thought the Tempe girl was murdered, but the medical examiner found cocaine in her system. The ruling of death was acute cocaine intoxication, but they couldn't actually determine if she was murdered or if she had died by accident from an accidental overdose. There was a case of CDs near the body and the police tested it for fingerprints and they found them. They tracked down the woman that the case belonged to and she was a local woman and she was shown the picture of the girl and she didn't know who she was. Come to find out the boyfriend was borrowing his girlfriend's car and he seen her hitchhiking. She was on the 32nd Street and Greenway Road in Phoenix, Arizona. This was on April 26, 2002, the day before she was found dead. He went up to the girl and offered her a ride to the area she needed to go, which was Tempe, Arizona. A rough estimation of how far this is when riding in a car is about a 10.7 mile drive, which would take about 18 minutes dependent on traffic, give or take on exactly where you were going, but that's just a rough estimation. The teenage girl did get in the car. They talked, she spoke in Spanish and mentioned to the guy driving that her family had disowned her because of her use of drugs. The girl then told the driver to drive her to a store that was close by. But then minutes later, she changed her mind and asked the driver to take her somewhere else. At this location, the girl met with another male. He got into the back seat of the car. He then sold the girl some cocaine. After getting the cocaine, she snorted some. The driver told police not long after the girl snorted the cocaine, she went into convulsions. The driver of the car then took the girl out of the car. He then told the guy that sold the coke to the girl to call 911 at a nearby Circle K gas station. Then the guy drove off. Detective John Thompson of the Tempe Police Department said whether she fell or was pushed out of the car or got out on her own, we don't know. We do have a 911 call that came in from a Circle K, but the call was unintelligible. Even though the driver admitted to leaving the girl there at the scene where she would later be found dead, the man that was driving could not be charged with a crime because at the time the medical examiner was conducting the autopsy, the medical examiner was unable to determine if the girl was still alive when she was left there or if she was even a juvenile. Because you know, they give a rough estimation of ages when they're doing the autopsy, if they don't know who they are. So, you know, they couldn't determine if she was actually a juvenile at the time or if she was an adult. And then same with if she was dead or alive when she was dumped. Now she was dumped and then, you know, she was dead when they did that, then they can charge him with a crime. But I guess since they couldn't really prove anything, they couldn't charge him with nothing. Which is sad because, you know, in my opinion, he should have 
done a little bit more than just dump her there and then go. I understand that he was scared, but it's just, you know, I just look at it like, dang, like, you know, somebody's in need of help. I understand that, you know, there's a legal narcotic in the car, but, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather, you know, go to the police then and get some help and hopefully she survives than rather go along and dump her and then, you know, possibly be charged with a crime like murder or second degree murder or anything like that, if that makes sense. I understand that it technically wouldn't be murder, but still, that's just my thoughts. What is weird about this case, and it is the sad fact that nobody has come around and said she is my daughter, sister, or I know who she is, especially since she was only a teen at the time that she died. Also, there's a theory that the Tempe girl could be from Mexico and that she immigrated from Mexico to the United States. For all we know, her family could have moved from the area or even went back to their home country. That could be another reason that nobody has claimed to know who Tempe girl is. I'll leave a link in the description below of a website you can go to and also I'll leave a, a number that you can call you know if you have any type of information on this case it's just really sad to know that you know this only happened 20 years ago this happened April 27 2002 you know and it's just like it's I mean I understand that it's not that recent I was only 13 at the time but I just look at it like, dang, like, you know, how can somebody not claim their kid or claim they even know this person? You know, they were so young and, you know, they died at such a young age. It's just, I don't know, it just kind of throws my mind for a loop sometimes when I'm thinking about it, you know. But, yeah, leave in the comments below what you guys think and let me know what you guys want to see. You know, we're here, really. Because that's what you're technically doing. But you guys be good and stay safe. And, you know, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.